Hey folks, this is Ashley Purdy from Blackfell Brides and you're watching Ramsey. How's it going there guys? Carl Davis here from Ramsey and today, this afternoon, we are joined by Black Bear Brides, only Ashley and I'm doing today myself. Mate, absolute pleasure. Just waking up, you missed food here. We haven't been acclimated yet, so since the start of the day. That's just just like a new drug. Brand new thing as well. We can do a US tour at the end of this I'm sure. Uh, and from here we're finishing up work tour, which is the very really last one. So like I said, that's the season and uh, drop the bank there, which is the very last one ever. Yeah, that's true. And the walk tour has been very important for you guys as well. Like you've been quite stable for that for quite a few years now, haven't they? Sure, I mean it's a thing for teenagers for the most part. You know, like all of us in the group and the band we all grow up going to work tours, you know, as kids, you know, we're like all skater kids, metal heads. And it's kind of just a random act. times that the festival's like that kind of depleting? Um, yeah, I don't know why they are or not. I don't know. Attendance seems okay. Um, maybe it's just the cost of infrastructure for making it happen. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah, absolutely, mate. I mean, we could be all day chatting about that, to be honest with you, I but, know. you know. How are we? Like, here, like 200,000 strong here? I don't know. It's about one, one, one ten hundred, you know, something like that. So, it's so, not like, considering that, like, Glastonbury's the next one big, uh, it's for a rock and metal festival, that's absolutely insane. Okay. So, I also wanted to talk to you as well. Uh, about the wake up video, which is actually fucking awesome, mate. Uh, what was going through your minds when you were kind of like putting that video together? Well, it's it's kind of speaks for the sign of the times, you know, with the political realm that's happening today and shit. And you can take a stance on either way on how that goes. I don't in the American system, what's going on right now, you know, right or left or where you stand or whatever. And then that's a video is kind of about that. It's most like think for yourself, you know what I mean? Sort of. There's no right or wrong, but just actually like think about the decisions that are made, you know, that you don't have any control over that you know government is probably controlling just think you know wake up so yeah. to speak you know what I mean <laughs> just think yeah Scary it's just thought. being conscious and uh, being like of mind you know don't let things you know like the world happen for you like do something about it as well you know mm. so kind of be an activist so to speak yeah was it quite surreal to shoot or was it like quite fun to kind of be like put into all those like jail cells and stuff like that not really. I think what's what was fun about it, and this is kind of like an insider thing for our fans, is like the guy who shot it, Robbie Starbuck, he actually shot our very first music video that was never released in Blackfell Brides. We did like Perfect Weapon, which is the very first one that was released, but we actually did one before that where it was never released, and yeah. he was the first director to ever actually film us, and he's the one who did the wake-up video. Yeah. So that was kind of cool to go back, you know, kind oh, of full mate. circle to go with him. Interesting. Uh, mate, if it's not broken, don't fix it, right? Yeah, yeah. No, it, was, it was good work. And going back, all the way back to the past, like, uh, who were the first people who kind of like got you into music to doing what you were doing today? Um, well, strangely enough, Michael Jackson. <laughs> so, that, that makes sense. Well, I mean, yeah. this is again when you you know you first get into pop or whatever. Yeah. But then after Michael Jackson, then I discovered Kiss, and then it was kind of like all over with, right? Yeah. So that was Kiss, and then I went to like Motley Crue and Guns N' Roses. So yeah, bad or Thriller. Uh, thriller. Yeah. Correct. Even though, he looked, even though he looked like rad in bad, and he should have yeah. stopped with his look and just stayed there, he looked rad. Yeah. But like, Thriller was like when I was a kid, and it was just like, you know, yeah, the yeah. monster kind of stuff. Uh, quite recently as well, in the UK, we um, there's a Mental Health Awareness Week uh, that we've just gone through as well, where Black Veil Prize is like very emotionally tied lyrics for that as well. Do you believe uh, that lyrics can actually save lives? Um, of course, I mean, because it's all interpretation as well. I mean, we come from a place of honesty the way we write too, you know, it's not all like just nonfiction or whatever the hell, you know, it's definitely fictional where we've lived the experiences, the things that we write about. I mean, there's even more so on that stance what you're talking about as far as mental health or suicide or depression that we each individually in the band you know deal with as well on a personal level that we don't really divulge that much you know but we do it through our writing yeah. so I meant yeah so it's something near and dear to our hearts that we actually like yeah like who are the artists that saved your lives um when I was growing up as a kid it was different like I never really had the depression kind of stuff. It was like you had to be tough yeah. where I'm from. There yeah. wasn't like what was me because if it was then you got left behind. Like where I grew up, I don't know, in, in the Midwest and Missouri, like in the country of the US is where I grew up. Yeah. You just had to be tough. You had to fight for yourself. Yeah. And it's probably working class. Either, area yeah, yeah, well. yeah, you know, exactly. So there was no like what was me or feel sorry for yourself or there was yeah. no time to be like depressed or as a sad kid yeah. listening to music. I was a metalhead and 
you just had to be fighting tough and be on the streets, you know? Yeah. That kind of thing. Do you think so, that's kind of like a backlash these days, though, that people are kind of like hiding behind that masculine facade that you can't actually be like express like these emotions that people kind of like need to because I feel as though that uh, depression and anxiety as well uh, don't get, especially for the male part of the population as well, it's like you have to hide behind the masculinity and stuff like that. Is that quite a dangerous philosophy now in 2018? I don't know the whole like hiding behind it or not. I don't know. It's just it's just two different like generations. I feel because like today I think it started when like I don't necessarily like the coddling of people like in sports. You know when everyone's equal and everyone's yeah. giving a trophy kind of thing. It just used to not like be like that. You had to like still like fight for your place. And I feel like that today for like kids too. Like if they're growing up in classes and schoolrooms where like they're taught like. Be kind, and you, you know you're everyone's equal, and everyone's got a fair share. Well, it's not like that in the real world. The real yeah. world's fucking tough. Exactly. You know what I mean? And to get like the job at whatever an office or whatever, you got to work. You got to educate yourself. You got to be strong. So I don't know. That has to do with the mental health problem too. Is like it's like exercise, like a muscle. Your mental as well. Your brain. You have to exercise that as well and become intelligent, and educated, and get help. Meaning, if you do suffer with anxiety, or depression, seek out help, therapy, and so to speak. Like I've been through there. I've actually done that. I've done the whole thing. I've gone to therapy and done a lot of stuff for myself. Yeah. Um, just awareness to be yeah. wise and intelligent about where you're going because the world's tough. It's not easy. It's not you know we're not all <laughs> equals and we're not all gonna get the trophy you know at the end of the day. Yeah, so. exactly. And veil as well, man. This is fucking big. Yeah. Did you have do you have arenas in mind for this kind of yeah. album, this kind of sound? Right. We've always been kind of growing there. I meant from Wretched and Divine and then through the fifth record, it was always had the arena sound. So, so anyhow, from Wretched and Divine, it was always this conceptual thing that was more like on a queen sense of stuff, you know, arena. And then when we went to do our fifth record with Bob Rock, who did like yeah. Uh, Motley Crue and Metallica Black and whatever it was that some sonic sound that we wanted to just to keep growing and evolving So we weren't making the same record over and over because a lot of bands do that, but exactly. I, don't know. I was working with Bob um, Very cool. He's very um, Authentic I guess like you know like old-school yeah. kind of feel he wanted us all sit in a room and like write together You know like yeah. jam and we're like we're not we're not jam we sit and like we're like methodical We want to write yeah. all this stuff out first and we'll program it and do shit now that we do yeah. He didn't understand that concept so we were kind of teaching him yeah. ways to write and reinvent stuff today You know so yeah. it was a, it was a very cool it was a learning process on both ends for yeah, us on that. Absolutely. And because it's turning your future as well with downloads slowly creeping up there. Are you looking at that main stage, looking at that headline spot, it's gonna be that's gonna be us one day. That's gonna be us. We've I think we've already proven that. Like we yeah. started here uh, like middle of the day main yeah. stage, worked our way almost to second stage headlining and now we're working our way up through main stage, you know what I mean? You're not in bad company when it's like Ozzy Manson shine down than us. I bet yeah. I think we have something to prove. Yeah. Because the other bands have been around for a long time, yeah. you know, and these are heritage bands and so who's the next to take their place in line, you know, so we're just gonna keep going and do what we do, man. Absolutely, yeah. Mate, thank you so much. <laughs> Ashley from Black Veil Brides, thank you so much for your time, really, really appreciate it. Enjoy your downloads and good luck today, all right?